Hello everyone, I'm Lin and I'm so happy to be sharing another floral card on the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel today. I love all the floral dyes from the latest release and I'm not yet done playing with them, though I promise my next video will focus on some of the stamps instead. For today's card, I am using the April dyes by Crafty Meraki. These are gorgeous dainty flowers and I dyed them a couple of times out of Kenson Mobile 200 GSM watercolor cardstock. I left them in their negative space and put some purple tape on the back to make it easy to ink blend on these. If you're having trouble ink blending, I recommend you try cheap watercolor cardstock. You don't need the expensive stuff for ink blending, but watercolor cardstock is designed to let the pigments sit on top for a little while, so it makes it really easy to blend it out smoothly. Of course, I am choosing to do a rainbow blend on these, and I am using the Pinkfresh Studio inks for this one. I love these inks, they blend out really nicely, and they have fantastic color options. Now, I'm only showing you once, but I did three of these sheets of uh, three florals, so I have plenty to fill my card with. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I am arranging all my floral pieces on this piece of cardstock. Now, I cut this cardstock slightly larger than I needed it to be because I will do some die cutting later. I'm making a mini slimline card. I'm just playing around with florals now. And I'm just seeing if I can fill the space with all the florals I have or if I should make some more. And again, this piece of cardstock is slightly larger than I need it to be, but whenever I'm making a pattern, I want to make sure that the pattern uh, continues off the cardstock as well. So to get that effect, it's easiest to get that if you're working with a larger sheet of cardstock than you will need. And now I can use my Barely Art Precision Craft glue to glue all of these dainty florals in place. I'm gluing them straight down onto the cardstock, I'm not adding dimension to them. The dimension in my card will be added later, and that's also a fun technique I'm dying to share with you, so stay tuned for that. I do love some dimension in my cards, but it would be pretty hard to do that with these super small flowers. So the way I'm going to bring in dimension on this card is I'm using the frame-worthy mini slimline dies, also by Crafty Meraki, from their most recent release. And I am centering those onto my panel, and I will die cut them, um, take them in place first, and then run them through my die cutting machine. And as you can see, it takes me a while to decide whether that's actually centered or not, because I do want it to be completely perfect for this card. I usually don't use my ruler, but I was tempted for this one. Now I'm just taping those in place temporarily with some purple tape, and that will make sure next, uh, nothing shifts in my die cutting machine. And there you can see it all die cut. Now I did die cut these frames a couple of more times out of thick white cardstock. I think I added six layers behind each frame, maybe four. I usually do even numbers, but who knows. Now I'm just taking that apart, and like I said, I will add dimension to the frame dies. I cut, I think it's four, I cut <laughs> four more layers of thick white cardstock, and I'm layering all of those together, and then I can layer my, um, my floral frames on top of that as well. Now it doesn't take much time at all to glue all of these together. Um, it's really easy to do and it uses up some of my scraps of white cardstock. I have a lot of white cardstock scraps because I work with A4 sized cardstock because that's easily available in Europe. And I make a lot of um, A5 sized cards, which is a standard US size because it makes sense for your letter sized paper but it doesn't really make sense for A4 sized paper, so I always have almost half a sheet left over. And adding dimension to my frames or my die cuts is a great way to use up those scraps. Now once I layered all the frames together, I can glue those onto my card base. I made a mini slimline card base. I will list the exact dimensions in the description below. And then I can insert that um, negative space, I guess that's what it's called, 
um, and that's not dimensional. And then the second frame is dimensional, and that just creates a really fun effect on your card. Just a little bit more interest to that gorgeous background. It's a great way to step up your card designs if you want your focus to just be on the background and you don't necessarily have a focal point. Now I am going to add a sentiment to this and that's from the Reason to Smile stamp set that's also part of the latest release. And I white heat embossed that onto black cardstock and I'm just trimming that out using my ruler and an X-Acto knife. I also wanted to prop up my sentiment and I used foam tape for that. Now the foam tape overlaps the inner frame a little bit and I didn't want that because dimension over dimension would make it a little bit more wonky. So I'm just tearing away at that foam tape until I have enough space for that frame to fit in. And then I can press that sentiment in place once I'm happy with how the foam tape is adhered to it. And that basically finishes up the card. I'm just going to add a couple of embellishments. These are the rainbow butterflies. They're not looking super rainbow in this shot, but I promise they are. I really love these gems by Crafty Meraki. They are super bright and super high quality. They feel a lot better than any card embellishment I've ever had. So I really like them and I also like their unique shape. I love the butterflies, but I also love the snowflakes. If you haven't seen the snowflakes yet, um, those are amazing embellishments. But I thought the butterflies fit well with this beautiful rainbow background. They'd also be great to use if you make a bouquet out of your floral dyes from this latest release. Just having some butterflies fluttering around, that would be fun too. Now I always make a matching envelope and I got a little bit lazy today and I just used pattern paper. But I also use this because I haven't used this yet and I have a couple of sheets of it and it's so gorgeous. I was tired of just looking at it in my closet. I wanted it to be on display somewhere or somewhere where I could at least use it. So I folded a mini slimline envelope out of that with my We Are Memory Keepers 123 punch board and I trimmed off the excess on the top and bottom flap. And the way to get a straight cut for that is just to line up your score line with some of the um, centimeter marks or inch marks, whatever marks you have on your paper trimmer. Line up the score line so it's straight and then your cut will be straight as well. And then I'm gluing that together with my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue and that finishes up the project for today. Lots of rainbow goodness in the background, in the envelope, even in the gems. I really like how this turned out. I hope you do too. If you did, make sure to leave a like on this video and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to read them. And you can also subscribe to the Crafty Muraki YouTube channel if you want to stay tuned for more inspiration on how to use the Crafty Muraki products. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.